Hi, I'm Chris Calver from Rapid Education and I'm going to show you how to configure your micro drone. So configuration uh, basically allows us to set up some of the uh, simple parameters on the drone uh, and in how it will respond to our control inputs and a few other features. Um, so to do this, you're going to need your assembled micro drone, you'll need a charged battery, a USB cable, your transmitter, and a computer with Betaflight installed. Now Betaflight is one of the many configuration programs uh, that are available to us. It's a Google Chrome browser extension, so you'll need Chrome installed as well as the Betaflight extension. Um, once you've got all those things in place, we can start the configuration. If you've already built the Tyrant S, you'll know that the receiver was already bound to the transmitter that was provided with it. Uh, for the micro drone, we need to bind our particular drone to the transmitter. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is to turn on the transmitter. So hold down both the power buttons until it turns on. You might get a warning um, that says that you need to make sure the throttle is all the way down and that all of the auxiliary switches are in the up position before it will boot. And then once it's, uh, once it's booted, press the uh, spanner and screwdriver icon to get into the settings menu. Uh, we need to go into system, and then press the models button. So assuming that the Tyrant and S is your model one, you've already got your, your bigger drone um, paired to model one, then move over to model two and press back. And the, um, the micro drone will be bound as model two. So that means that if we have the, the tyrant switched on, then the uh, transmitter will, will, will control the tyrant, or if the micro drone is switched on, then it will be the second model and it will switch to that. We now need to press the RX bind button to put the transmitter into bind mode. And it says on the screen, binding to RX uh, to show that the transmitter is now in bind mode. Uh, so we need to go over to our drone. And on the top of the flight controller, there's a tiny little button, tiny little tactile switch here at the uh, front left. We need to hold that down whilst connecting uh, the battery. And so it's a little bit fiddly. Sometimes it's handy to have two people to do it. One to hold the button down the drain and one to connect it. But you can plug that in. And uh, there's some LEDs on top of the flight controller. Now mine are underneath. Uh, my camera mount, so I can't quite see them. Um, but the uh, the green LED under there is the one you're looking for. So if it's blinking very fast, it's because the uh, transmitter is not in bind mode and it's looking for a transmitter to bind to. If it's blinking slowly, uh, then the bind process is almost complete and we need to uh, move on. So mine is blinking slowly, which means it's half, uh, it's half complete. I now need to go back to my transmitter and press the back button on the screen in the top left and that completes the bind process. Now on my drone the green LED on the flight controller on the top of the flight controller is now solid uh, and that indicates that the bind process is complete so I can go back to the main menu and I can unplug the drone and the binding is now complete. Now we're going to set up the auxiliary switches so press your spanner and screwdriver icon to get into the menu and on the system menu, just go into models and check that we're on model two because we want to set up the switches for, um, for model two and we don't want to overwrite what we already have in model one. So we're on model two, into the functions menu and then scroll down until you find aux channels for auxiliary channels, press on that. And we're going to set up two switches, um, one for channel five and one for channel six. Um, so we're on channel 5 here, so press the no entry sign to get into the settings and choose SWX for switch. And you can see at the moment it says SWA, so switch A. We want to change this to switch D, so press on that, uh, change to SWD, and that means that channel 5 is now set up on this switch. Uh, we need to set up another one for channel 6, so move over to channel 6. Again, press on the no entry sign, SWX. Uh, and this one we want to change to SWC, which is this switch here. And that's it, so we can just go back, check channel 5 is on SWD, and channel 6 is on SWC, and then press the back button. 
And finally, we're just going to set up the uh, fail safe. So right down at the bottom, go into the fail safe menu, and we'll have fail safe for channels uh, one, two, three, and four. Um, so let's do channel one first. So where it says off, press on that, and then press on on. And uh, channel one is left and right on uh, the right hand stick. You can see this little bar at the bottom moving. Uh, and that tells me what the fail safe value is going to be. So leave the stick in the middle because we want this one to be central and then press set up. Then back and you can see now that channel one is set to 0%. Uh, channel two is forwards and backwards on the same stick. So we want that again central, set up and go back and we can see that's now 0%. Channel three is slightly different, that's the throttle stick here. So we go into channel three, switch it on. And in this one, we want it to be minus 100%. So make sure the stick is all the way down and press set up. And finally, channel four, which is uh, left and right on this stick, switch it on, make sure the stick is central, press set up, back. And so you can see we've got zero, zero, minus 100 and zero. That's our fail safe setup. And now press the back button all the way back to the start. Uh, and that's the auxiliary channels and fail safe complete. So with Betaflight open on your computer, uh, connect your drone, uh, click your flight, flight controller to your computer using the USB cable. Let's plug that in. And the first time you plug it in, it might take a few seconds to install the driver, but you should see uh, that you get a COM number here. So once you've got that, click connect and uh, you can just test that you're getting some basic data here by moving your drone and it should move the same way as the uh, the drone on the screen so there you can say this little, little green arrow indicates the front of the drone so if I tilt it towards the front uh, then it tilts towards the front of the screen here and so uh, we can, can just make sure that our flight control is mounted the correct way around and um, place it flat on the desk it's a bit difficult with uh, this particular setup because the motors have the wires coming out the bottom, but as flat on the desk as we can, and just click calibrate accelerometer to make sure that the accelerometer is as uh, accurate as can be. Um, then switch to configuration. You shouldn't need to change anything in here. Uh, the defaults should be absolutely fine. Um, just make sure that you're on uh, PPM RX input, um, but uh, all the default settings there should be, should be okay. Um, now we need to check that uh, our receiver is working correctly, so click on the receiver tab, turn on your transmitter, make sure the throttle is down and all of the auxiliary switches are up. Uh, and then we can see here that uh, if I move the roll, which is uh, left and right on the right hand stick here, then the roll indicator here should move, like so. Uh, likewise, forwards and backwards on the same stick does pitch, left and right on this stick for your, and throttle is up and down on this stick. Um, so the last thing that we need to do, uh, now that we've uh, confirmed that the sticks are working, is make sure that the uh, auxiliary switches are working. So if you remember, we set up auxiliary uh, 1 to be switch D. So when I move switch D, we should see auxiliary 1 here jump up. That's perfect. So it has just two positions down uh, and up. And then auxiliary two we configured to be switch C, which has an up, a middle, and a down position. So we should have three different values that that can send. So that's all working correctly. Uh, the next thing we do uh, need to do is set up the modes. Um, so before we do that, let's uh, have a look at what the different modes are and what they mean. The three modes available to us are angle, horizon, and rate. And they can basically be considered uh, beginner, intermediate, and expert. Uh, so what is the difference between uh, the three modes? The angle mode is the one that you're gonna start in, and it basically has a certain level of self-leveling, um, which means that the, uh, the drone will automatically return to a reasonably stable level position when you're not making any control inputs. So if we uh, were to use the um, the, the roll command, so we're basically going to roll to the left. The drone will roll to the left up to about a maximum of 45 degrees with the stick hard over. And if we let go of the stick, 
it will return to that central position. And the same with the pitch. So if we were to pitch it forwards, the drain will tilt to about 45 degrees. And as we release it, it will come back to the central position. So it's self-leveling. Uh, if you let go of the controls, roughly the drain will go back to a level position. Um, I'm going to skip straight to the third mode and then explain what the intermediate level is. So the third mode is rate, um, sometimes called acro, and that's your expert mode. Um, in this case, it's not self-leveling at all. Uh, and it's called rate mode because your controls actually change the rate of movement rather than a relative position. So if I move the uh, joystick ever so slightly to the left, just a small amount, the rate of bank will be quite slow. And if I let go of the joystick and it returns to the central position, the drain will stay uh, where I left it and it will still be continuing to move to the left. If I want it to move back to a central position, I need to put in some right bank to get it back to level again. It won't self-level. Um, to the point that in rate mode, there's nothing to stop the drain going all the way upside down and flipping all the way over. So that's why it's sometimes referred to as acro mode, um, acrobatic. Uh, so the intermediate mode that I mentioned is called horizon and it's basically a combination of rate and angle mode. So it's effectively angle mode in that it's self-leveling. Uh, if I let go of the stick, it will go back to the central position, but it's furthest extremes. If I push the stick all the way to one end or the other, it's, uh, it's got rate mode, so it can still flip all the way over. So it's kind of like a, a transitional mode between, uh, between angle and rate mode. So to set the modes up, we need to go into the modes tab. Uh, you may already have some values in here, which you can delete using the uh, Lex buttons down the right hand side, or it may be blank like this. Um, so we're going to configure the arm and disarm switch, and also we're going to configure the angle, horizon and rate mode. So first let's look at arm and disarm, so click add range. This needs to be on auxiliary one because it's this switch that we want to use to arm and disarm. And you can see this little yellow marker here when it's in the up position. The yellow marker is at the bottom. If I move the switch down, uh, it jumps up to about 2000. What I want to do is set this uh, threshold here with the sliders up to the top uh, and the lower one to about 1600. And the idea being that when we switch the switch down, switch D and the down position for arm, uh, the yellow pointer moves into the threshold here and that will mean that the drone is armed and when it's in the up position it moves outside of the threshold which means it's disarmed. We now need to set up angle and horizon mode so click add range on each of those and we want to use auxiliary 2 which is our switch C so drop down and choose box 2 and when you move auxiliary switch 2, you should see that the pointer for both of those moves at the same time. So here we have uh, the pointer for auxiliary 2. And what we want to do is set up angle at the very bottom here, so right at the bottom and then up to about 1200. And horizon can stay where it is in the middle. The idea being that when the switch is in the up position, this is our sort of default position when we first power up, um, we're in the beginner mode, so uh, angle mode, and uh, this little pointer is inside angle. When we move to the middle position, this is our intermediate mode, so the angle pointer is now outside of the threshold, so angle mode is off, but the horizon mode is now inside the threshold, so horizon mode is on, and finally, in the bottom, neither angle nor horizon mode is on. That means we're, uh, we have no um, pilot support features on, so no self-leveling or anything like that, which means we're in acro mode, so there's like the expert mode if you like. Uh, so we can click save there and quickly test these are uh, working by um, with arm and disarm, so we, we arm it and this should go yellow when it's in the armed mode and off and back to grey when it's disarmed and likewise with angle and horizon mode, uh, the switch is in the up position for angle Angle illuminates yellow, down, horizon illuminates yellow, that's the middle position, and down again. Neither of them are illuminated because now we're in uh, the rate mode, the uh, expert mode. So that's completely set up to make sure it's saved, and then we can disconnect. And we can do a, a quick basic check to make sure it's working. Let's disconnect the uh, USB cable, connect our battery, And when we arm, 
make sure the throttle's in the down position, arm it, and slightly increase the throttle. I'm just going to hold my drone down. The motor should start to spin. And if I disarm it, they should stop. So that's it. Uh, everything is configured, and we are just about ready for a test flight.